Hey, what's the dab spot? I'm DB and today the package arrived in the mail. I don't have the unboxing because I was too excited to open it. And uh, sorry for the washing machine running in the background. Wash my clothes. Anyway, today we are doing a review on Le Nerf Stampede. I don't know if you guys can see this in the video frame. So yeah, this thing fits in the video frame, surprisingly, for freaking how massive it is. It's not as big as my Raptor Strike, but it's freaking heavy, especially all the weight in the back. Because it takes 6D style batteries, which is a freaking lot of batteries. So, let's start with the external overview. I should probably turn off the little switch. So, up here, we've got the front bezel. Here you've got tactical rail here, tactical rail here, rail here, rail here, rail here, and there's a rail on the other side when, when I flip the gun over. I'll uh, show you. have got the front foregrip that also doubles as a bipod or a, well, it's not really a monopod, it's just really a foregrip, but I like to call it a monopod because it's got, because it's in a single cylinder. So it is a monopod because it's got a little stand at the very bottom. So it's a monopod, push a little button, turns into a bipod, and this bipod isn't really the sturdiest. It's meant you hold the blaster up like that, but it works because this is supporting the back of it. So we've got the shield up here. Doesn't really do much. A little access door. In case you do much. A little access door in case you need to get your finger in there to clear out some jams. Got the magazine well right here. Got the release button right here. Got the trigger right here. And uh, we've got the battery compartment pretty much taken up. That's what this big ridge is right here. Got a sling mount here, sling mount here, sling mount here. I guess this could be used as a sling mount as well. It came with the bandolier. So. But I didn't get, cause but I didn't get one because I didn't get mine brand new because they cost like ninety dollars or just for the box, just for the main cost, not even the shipping. Should I just be like down here? Yeah, I should. I feel like I should be down here, cause this thing is just massive. Or I'm gonna go turn it around. Oh yeah. Also, there's a little window. You can see a little spring inside there. So, on this side, same thing, tactical rail here, another release button right here, the little switch to turn it on or off, and then battery compartment taking up this whole area. Again, got a little little side up here to look through, it goes through this whole handle. We've got another little point of reference here, I guess, at this, um, at this part right here. There's little two plastic bars holding it. Then you got the front iron sight. So it's an aperture sight. And it's much like another gun that I actually have with me. But first we're gonna go over how it fires. So it's a motorized direct plunger. So what it does is it takes a dart. I'm a, I think it pulls that I don't know I don't know how the thing works um, but what I think it does is it um, it pulls back the little spring it pulls back it uses the motor to pull back the little um, orange plunger tube and then when it's ready it releases it or maybe it's the exact opposite maybe it takes a little black piece and goes in and then it's when it's ready comes all the way back out. I don't know. But um yeah. That's pretty much it for this blaster. I've also got another blaster. Oh, and in case you didn't notice, this is in the original end strike line, not in the elite line. I've also got another blaster, which I don't have the rapid strike, but I do have this. And I attached the bipod just because it's I borrowed it from my Raptor Strike. This is the this is a blaster in the AccuStrike line, and this bipod is not cooperating. Anyway, 
There you go. Um, this is a blaster in the Aki Strike line. This is a blaster in the Aki Strike line. You can tell by all the orange and stuff. It's basically just a rapid strike reskin, but it comes with the scope and it comes with this long range barrel. It does not come with the bipod. I borrowed this from my Raptor Strike. Um, got a little access door, but here, front barrel extension is detachable. You can got a little lug here. You can put on any barrel extension that exists that has that has this little ring inside it. So I could probably take one of my barrel extensions from my regulator. I could just shove it on there, and it would work. It's got the little detachable scope via the tack rail. Tack rail here, tack rail here, one under here occupied by the bipod, one on this side, one on that side. So, yeah. Little access door for clearing out jams. Um, got a sling mount here. You got sling mounts here, I guess. Also got a sling mount up here. Got a little, you got another aperture sight, but this time it's actually like three holes instead of or this time it's two holes instead of one hole, big open space, and then the front iron. This one is one hole here, another hole going through here, if you guys can see that. And then there's this little front sight. You can flip it down if you want to use a scope, or if you just want to have it ready, just in case something obstructs your scope, and you can have it ready. One thing that I like about aperture sights over scopes and open sights or not really over scopes definitely over open sights is that when you look down there you get um it's it's better because you get more accurate if you line up the but the downside of having an aperture sight is number one it can get clogged with dust or dust or dirt or snow or ice number two it's actually kind of hard to find the front post sometimes in the in the aperture sight. And number three, just trying to find, just trying to aim at something. It's easier to aim with an open sight, but it's more accurate if you use a um, aperture sight. But um, got another sling mount under here. Flywheel trigger, rev trigger, primary trigger. Stock. This button right here pushes it in. It when you put it in, in the front, it stays in the front. When you have it in the back, it's locked in the back. Like if I did this, it doesn't do anything. So you have to press this button. It's actually super sturdy stock. And this one, it clicks in place. There is no middle position anywhere. But um. One difference that this access door has from the um, from the one in the stampede is that it doesn't go back all the way. Number one and number two, it's transparent or translucent. It's translucent orange. This one is just this one is a solid orange with some holes in it, and it's also much larger. But this one girlfriends and you can lock it in the back there like that you can have it bounce a little bit um oh and uh yeah and it'll also tell you if the access door is closed or not if the access door is closed it'll show a little green um it'll show green through this little hole but when it's open it shows orange so when it's open, it shows orange. That, you can't you can't just do it from the edge. You gotta do it from the middle. You gotta kind of push down a little bit. Um, but then when it's locked, it'll be green. And I am loving this mono bipod. That's what I call it because it's a it's double. Although one thing that Nerf could have done is they could have made this button. If you pressed it, then you'd be able to crimp it like, together. Then you'd be able to crimp the legs together. Actually, if I just take this off, I lay the gun down. So, as you can see, 
you got this little button back here. But what it does is it just extends it. But if Nerf made that button a double function button, so when you press it, then you could crimp the legs, and then you could just purely let go. Then you could push it up. You just. And then when it is ready, then you just hold the button down, and there it goes. It's open. Which I think would actually be a nice idea if Nerf had done that. Also, since they're re releasing the Stampede, I actually recommend that Nerf to release it with the bipod example that I just mentioned, where they make this little button back here feature as a double button so you can't crimp the legs. You can't crimp the legs shut if, you, if the button's not pressed. So when you press the button, then it'll shut like that. And then you can let go and you can just push it up. There you go. Got a bipod or a monopod. I know there's a difference between a bipod and a monopod. Feel free to judge me. Feel free to leave that down in the comments. But um, it's pretty much the external overview of this of these blasters. But, uh, also, um, I've got one more thing. If you if you ever have you ever noticed these little tabs up here, and have you wondered what they're for? I actually did though. So you can. You can pinch them, and it comes off. Voila. Watch. Look at this. Look at this. See, it's, it's really easy to push the shield back like that. So it's on there like that. You can see if I wiggle it, it's not coming off. If I pull up on it like that, it's not going to come off. But when I pinch it, it comes off. And, the, and how it does that is it takes these two little um, legs here. When you pitch them together, it opens them up. So that's how it's able to do that. Or you could also put it on like that. Like that. There you go. It's on. Thing ain't coming off. Unless if you back it up too hard like, like I just did. So, um, yeah. That is pretty much it for the external overview of these blasters. Um, let's see them out on the range. This is the Nerf Stampede ECS shooting zombie strike darts on his 18 round magazine. They ran out of regular blue elite darts and I didn't want to order streamlines because streamlines suck. So, uh, yeah. very unexpected. Jeez, Nerf attachments are like super like easy to come to get up. You can tell by this line that there is no um, little place for it to lock in in the middle. So yeah. That's what I on there. Now it's not on there.
Bray.